Hello, Pike Lake. My name is Mike, and I'm a student at UMD. And today I'll be taking you guys through a geology review um, for your fourth grade class. So let's get started. So like I said, I'm Mike. Um, I'm in the environmental education program um, at University of Minnesota Duluth. Um, I live here in Duluth and love going on adventures with my dog Bear. Um, today we're going to review some things you guys have already learned about rocks and learn a few new things. Um, so the basis of what um, your teacher wanted us to review today is the rock cycle. Um, some of you may have learned about this more than likely. And we're going to be learning about not only the rock cycle, but the types of rocks that are created within it. So as you can see, um, the rock cycle starts with volcanic eruption, which typically creates igneous rock, um, and then sediment combined with igneous rock, creating sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock through different processes turns into metamorphic rock. Eventually, that metamorphic rock gets pushed way down underneath the Earth's crust and turns into magma. And that all repeats itself again when that magma comes up in volcanic eruption. So to summarize, the rock cycle is a slow, long journey of rocks down from the Earth's surface, like we said, and then back up again. Um, the rocks often change during this process. Not all rocks do every time, but that's what happens typically. Um, during this cycle, rocks form deep in the Earth um, which, like we said, causing them to change, return to the surface, and come back below again. Uh, three main kinds of rocks are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. So the name igneous comes from the Latin word ignis, which means fire. Um, but there's different types of igneous rock. We're not going to go over a ton of those right now, but those are uh, generally categorized by how quickly the lava cooled that created them. And that gets to our next point. Igneous rocks are created from the cooling and hardening of magma or lava, typically after some type of eruption. Um, and then the size of the crystals you find in igneous rock depends on how fast the lava cooled. So if the lava cools really, really, really fast, you're gonna have really, really small crystals. And if the lava takes a long time to cool down, you're going to have large crystals. So an example of when the lava will cool fast, say in Hawaii, when an eruption takes place and that water then, or that lava then drops into the water, that lava is going to cool down really, really quick. Um, whereas lava that never quite makes it to the Earth's surface and still underground, um, so all that heat is insulated, it's gonna cool down eventually, but it's gonna be a much slower process. It's gonna have those big, large crystals. Next, we have sedimentary rock. Um, so this type of rock is formed from the long-term buildup of different minerals and organic materials on the Earth's surface, so not underneath. Um, and after this buildup, there's a long process called cementation. So easy way to remember that is to think of cement. All these different materials, old plant material, minerals, things like that, just compact over time and create um, a different kind of rock in itself. Um, this often has lots of layers. Some of you might've heard of sandstone. And so that type of material that seems to grade off really easily or chip off really easily, or the softer type of rocks, oftentimes those softer rocks are gonna be called sedimentary rocks. So the third type of rock is metamorphic rock. Um, metamorphic rocks are either igneous or sedimentary rocks, um, but what happens to them is these metamorphic rocks over long periods of time change or are metamorphized, metamorphosed, um, due to intense heat and pressure underneath the Earth's crust. So these are rocks that have over time been buried and pushed down underneath um, the Earth's crust. And um, these rocks are crystalline and often have, you know, kind of like banded layers. Um, so granite would be an example of a metamorphic rock, and they have this layered kind of texture. 
So I'm gonna let your teacher pause it here and take you to this cool rock cycle video. Help you remember what we talked about a little bit. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Moving on, we're gonna talk about some local stuff. So, Rocks of Lake Superior. I um, bet that all of you have been around Lake Superior living this close to it. So some of you may have even hunted for rocks. Um, so some of the more common ones is what we're gonna go through next. So first up, we got chert and chalcedony. Um, these are formed from silica. Silica is this kind of microscopic grain material that almost looks like sand and oftentimes is part of what you'd find in normal sand at a sandy beach. Um, so these are divided in two different groups. So Chalcedony um, is translucent and glossy and it has a deep burgundy color. So burgundy is kind of that red color or maroon color. Um, and then Chert is opaque and waxy. So when you say waxy, some of you might've seen earwax before. That's kind of that yellow color, um, maybe a little tan, stuff like that. So um, you can't really see through it and it's not shiny. So these are found along numerous Duluth and Northern Wisconsin, um, as well as the North Shore of Minnesota. Um, just about any beach, any shore you find is gonna have these rocks very commonly. Next, we have porphyry or rhyolite. Um, so these rocks were formed in still molten magma before it erupted onto the surface. So these, this would be magma that got trapped underneath and over you know, a long, long period of time, thousands of years, slowly cooled down and created these rocks. So they're typically dark colored, dark gray, black, um, typically boxy or round shaped. And they're also very, very common at Lake Superior beaches. Many of you might be familiar with agates. So agates come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Some people like to collect them. Um, bigger agates can sometimes be of value. Um, so they're anywhere from the size of a pea and some of the bigger agates found on Lake Superior shores have been almost 20 pounds. So these are usually red, orange, and yellow and that coloring is ca caused by a process called oxidation. So, um, which is from iron. So when iron and water mix, um, it creates this almost bleeding effect of the iron. And this bleeding effect has kind of colored these rocks over thousands of years. Next, we have basalt. Um, so one of the four rock types that make up the basement bedrock of the Earth's crust. It's formed by lava that cooled really quickly on the surface, whereas rhyolite was really slowly underneath. This stuff got to the earth's surface, hit the cooler air, and then um, formed. So Lake Superior basalt is 1.1 billion with a B, yes, billion years old. So kind of hard to comprehend that. It's recognized by its bluish black coloring and small crystals found in tons of different shapes and sizes. Um, but with having all those different shapes and sizes, typically your best skipping rocks are gonna be basalt. Typically those are your blue, your dark gray, sometimes black. Um, if you find a nice shaped round, rounded rock, it's likely basalt. All right, I'm gonna let your teacher pause it here. And there's a short video that talks about the ancient volcanic activity and which affected Lake Superior geology. Hope you enjoy it. All right. So now your teacher will have time to go through with you guys. Um, I assume that before this, um, you guys talked about finding some rocks. So you guys are gonna go through a short activity um, where you guys by now should already have these two to three rocks. They can be any type of rock, doesn't need to be the stuff we went through. And we're gonna have each um, student go around and share if they can figure out if it's an igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic rock. And if they know the specific type of rock, um, they can also share that in, as well as why it's that type of rock. So if you're ever looking to learn more about Lake Superior geology, 
um, and you know, local informational rocks. The Rock Picker's Guide to Lake Superior is a great book. Uh, Christmas is coming up, so if you're one of those people who really wants to learn more, it'd be a good one to ask mom and dad for. All right. At this time, your teacher will be talking to you about doing the Kahoot quiz that goes along with this lesson. So um, thank you for listening. And um, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, guys.